For the past few weeks, I've been using the Lauer Nanomorph 50ml anamorphic lens of Joy with my GH6. And anamorphic is something I've been trying to get into for a heck of a long time, and Lauer have sent me this lens to try, but not to keep, so hashtag not sponsored, though I did get to try before I buy, effectively. I took this on a few adventures. I went to London and did some touristy things. I had some workshops and photo walks around the UK, and I've just tried to get as much footage with it as I can. Oh, I also got caught completely in the rain with it in Liverpool, which was brilliant. So while it's not technically weather sealed, I do think it held up quite well in these terrible conditions. <laughs> what are the benefits of the Nanomorph? Well, it is a 1.5 times squish squeeze <laughs> it's a 1.5 times squeeze constantly throughout the plane of focus so with some anamorphic lenses depending on where you're focused in the frame the squeeze factor will change so there's a little bit more maths involved with this one it's dead simple it's just 1.5 throughout jobs are good and this lens is available with blue orange and now silver flares and I went for the orange because I think uh, for uh, wedding films and things and just I, I think personally it's much more usable and flattering compared to the blue. The blue is super cool and probably iconic you know you think in a lot of sci-fi films and things like that but you can't use that effect in all circumstances whereas I think the orange is much more versatile. The size of this lens is superb, it's absolutely teeny tiny. It really blew me away that I could get an anamorphic lens in this sort of smaller package. In terms of build quality, it's metal, it's very nicely balanced on the GH6, and it was just a joy to use. I shot basically everything wide open because I just, I'm not too bothered about edge sharpness, it's blooming anamorphic, it's only going to be dead sharp in the middle anyway, so I wanted to get it wide open and see the characteristics that this lens could bring to the table. Now I know anamorphic and sort of a little bit lomography in a way, not being clinically sharp throughout the frame isn't everyone's cup of tea and it's not going to work for every single scenario, but I do think the characteristics of the nanomorphs are absolutely charming. The edge softness really draws your eye in and the flares are very nice and, and I just really enjoyed using it. When I see the footage back, uh, particularly sort of the rainy footage or the footage in this little sort of garden walk that I went round, it just makes me smile. I just think there's something about anamorphic lenses that you can try and replicate to a degree with, you know, your different aperture uh, shaped bokeh and things like that, but you do need a proper anamorphic lens to get the job done. Now there is a school of thought that real anamorphic only begins at 1.8 squeeze factor and I can see the pros and cons of that. I do think obviously the effects will be a little bit more pronounced the, the more squeeze you get, but I think 1.5 certainly does give you that anamorphic look. So the pros of this lens, it's incredibly small, it's very easy to manipulate in post-production because you don't have to mess with different squeeze factors. The results I think are beautiful, it's not the sharpest wide open, you will get sharp results as you stop down, but you don't necessarily buy this lens for it to be perfect. I think it's more than usable wide open and I thoroughly enjoyed the results that I got. I would recommend of course, when shooting video in general, using a ND filter. I used a mist variable ND filter by Freewell on a lot of this footage, so if you see any blooming highlights that might be from the ND rather than the lens. But again, it's all about curating the character for this sort of footage. I wanted it to be a little bit soft around the edges, I wanted the highlights to be blooming, I wanted to really sort of add a lot of character into this footage, and that's what anamorphic is all about for me. I'll be honest, at one point when I was looking at this footage it did kind of make me want to sell everything I own and just get anamorphic lenses because <laughs> I'm really really a sucker for the look of it and they really are quite affordable compared to some anamorphic lenses and certainly more pocketable well not pocketable that's the wrong word but portable now the GH6 came into its own with this because I was shooting open gate for most of this footage not all of it but most of it and that means that I can get more pixels into the frame without cropping and losing too much data I don't want it to be too ridiculously letterboxy but I do obviously need it to be a little bit letterboxy and widescreen to to 
fill the frame when it's de-squeezed, if that makes any sense at all. So basically use open gate if you have it for your anamorphic lenses because you get more pixels into the image without losing any of the extra data. And I have to say, even though I use open gate a lot, I'm really glad that I've actually used open gate for its kind of intended purpose. <laughs> The GH6 is a joy to use with the anamorphic lens. You can add the squeeze factor in so you can see it exactly how it's going to look on the back of your camera. I've added this to my quick menu so I can just quickly put it into 1.5 so I can see everything fine. One thing I had the issue with was the in-body stabilisation. Even though the lens is 50mm, you have to take in the squeeze factor for the IBIS to work properly. If you leave your IBIS at 50mm, it's still a little bit shaky, so you need to drop it down to the equivalent of, of the focal length it will be once it is de-squeezed. Am I going to buy the set? I really do want to buy the set, to be honest. I think the 50mm is lovely, but it's a little bit too close to the subject, even taking into consideration that the squeeze makes it wider than it would be if it wasn't squeezy. I'm sorry, this whole video sounds like gibberish. <laughs> But basically, if you have a 50mm lens on a micro four thirds sensor, we know that you double it and it makes 100mm, right? You have to take in the de-squeezy factor, that's the official term, into account so it's actually slightly wider than the 100mm, maybe sort of 70mm. But I have pulled that number out of my backside because I can't quite figure out how much it is. Let me know in the comments what it is in taking the squeeze factor into account. One of the things that surprised me pleasantly with the Nanomorph is the minimal focus distance is really quite close and that doesn't affect the uh, squeeze amount as I've, I've mentioned regardless of whether you're closer to the lens or further away it's still a 1.5 anamorphic and having that closer focal distance can give you some really lovely creative effects. So you've got your 50, your 35 and your 27 and the whole thing is quite a pricey sort of bundle but when you consider how pricey anamorphic lenses can be it's not actually that bad, it's relatively affordable compared to other options available. I know that's crazy to say, you know, like a two and a half thousand pound bundle for three lenses is affordable because it's blooming not, but a lot of anamorphic, particularly full frame anamorphics, are just insanely priced, like the price of a good car kind of price. So the nanomorphs open the anamorphic look to more consumer sort of market, which is really nice. So I have enjoyed my anamorphic foray. I think I will like to get some more nanomorphs uh, in different focal lengths going forwards. I've also pre-ordered the Moment anamorphic adapter, which I'll review that when the Kickstarter is done doing what it's doing. I like the idea of being able to use that on vi vintage lenses to sort of stack up some different kinds of character. Anamorphic is so much fun to play with. It's a little bit annoying in the social media era. Oh, this is such a pretentious negative point, but whatever. When you're thinking about, you know, you're doing this job and you think, oh, I could film it in open gate so I could do a little bit for vertical content for Instagram or for the client or for, you know, for other social media purposes that don't always like the landscape 16 by 9 video. With your anamorphic, you're kind of stuck sort of stacking them all together if you want to share them on socials, which does look pretty cool. But having open gate with a standard lens does have more versatility with the four by three ratio of the video. I hope that makes any sense. That makes me sound so superficial. <laughs> my life does not run around Instagram, I promise. I feel like this review has just been nonsense and I'm really sorry. Hope you like the footage. If you have any questions, I probably won't be qualified in any way to answer them <laughs> as I'm very new to anamorphic myself, but I am enthusiastically trying to keep up. I think the footage is lovely, so <laughs> I want the whole set. Uh, I just have to remortgage my house first, possibly. But yeah, who needs a house when you've got lenses? Thank mm -hmm. you.